Hello and welcome to BBC Bite Size with Chris Smith and with Ben Valsler. We're from The Naked Scientists and this podcast is all about the calculations that we rely on in chemistry. So Ben, why would a chemist need to do some calculations? Well, there are all sorts of reasons for doing calculations in chemistry. You can do them to work out what's happening or to work out what will happen if you do a certain reaction. Also, you could do some simple calculations to see if you're losing some of your products just down the drain. And how does that work? Well, because you can't create or destroy matter chemically, then the mass of the products of a reaction should be the same as the mass of all your starting materials. So in other words, it's a bit like when you bake a cake. If you weigh out all of the ingredients in that cake and then check that the mixture weighs the same as the total of those ingredients that should be what happens. Yes, that's right. If the weight of the mixture is less than the weight of the starting materials, then you know that somewhere some of your cake has got lost. Or, for example, if you were splitting water by electrolysis, if you put in 9 grams of water and you got out 8 grams of oxygen, you'd expect to get 1 gram of hydrogen out. So if it got any less, then that tells you that some hydrogen must be leaking out, and I guess that could be dangerous. Yes, exactly right. Hydrogen is very flammable, so you need to know where it's all going, because it could be very dangerous if it builds up. Now that's all very well for very simple reactions where you can easily measure the masses of everything. But what happens when things get a bit more complicated? Well, you're not always interested in all of the different products. For example, imagine that you had found a kilogram of silver sulphide ore. Now, what's the thing that you really want to know about that? Well, obviously, what it's worth would be fairly high on my list of priorities. Exactly. Something like silver sulphide ore, you want to know how much it is. But in order to find that out, you need to know how much silver is in that ore. And how would I actually work that out just from the weight of the ore? Well, the formula for silver sulphide is Ag2S, which means that for every atom of sulphur, that's S, you have two of silver, that's Ag. So if I had three grams of silver sulphide, let's say, would that mean then that I had two grams of silver? Well, no, because silver atoms and sulphur atoms don't actually weigh the same amount. So to work out the amount of silver, you've got to know the mass of the different atoms involved. And how do you weigh an atom? Well, what we need to know is something called the relative atomic mass, and you can usually find that on a good periodic table. But if you look at a periodic table, there are two numbers against each of the elements. So which one are we looking at? Well, the two numbers will usually be the number of protons in an atom, and the other number will be the relative atomic weight. Because atoms are made up of electrons, neutrons and protons and protons and neutrons weigh about the same, the relative atomic mass, or the mass number, is the sum of the number of protons and neutrons. Now this means that on your periodic table, the atomic mass will be the larger number of the two. The atomic mass of the average hydrogen atom, for example, is 1, for carbon it's 12, and a chlorine atom weighs about 35.5. How can something have a mass that's 35.5? Well, the thing is, there are several different forms of chlorine called different isotopes, and each one has a different number of neutrons, and so it has a different mass. Most chlorine is chlorine 35, so it has a mass of 35, but about a quarter is chlorine 37, so the average mass of all the chlorine will be 35.5. I see. But how does this help us with the silver sulphide, the Ag2S we were talking about earlier? Well, an atom of silver weighs 108 relative mass mass unit and an atom of sulfur weighs 32. So as long as you know that the formula is Ag2S, you can work out the proportion of silver in silver sulfide. We do this by working out the mass of silver in the formula divided by the total formula mass. And, and what is the formula mass? Well, it's the relative mass of the whole formula. So in this case of Ag2S, it's the mass of Ag2, that's two silver atoms, plus one atom of sulfur. OK, so there are two atoms of silver... Their mass, looking at the periodic table, is 108 each. So the total amount of silver is 2 times 108, that's 216. Plus, we've got one atom of sulphur, so that's, looking at the periodic table, 32. And if we add all that together, we get 248. Is that right? Yes, that's right. The formula mass is 248, but the mass of silver is 216. So 216 divided by 248 is 0.87. So that actually means that in your silver sulphide, there is 87% silver.